Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Season 3 of the Profit Power Hour. So glad to have you joining today. And, uh, man, I'm just thinking about the fact that we've been doing this for three years now. And uh, I love the opportunity to meet with all of you guys on a monthly basis. So many of you come back every month. And I just want to say thank you for being here. Super excited about today's content, talking about outbound selling. Is it the most neglected growth opportunity in PM? I love how you could say controversial things and then put a question mark at the end of it and get away with it. Well, all right, folks. Um, I don't think we've ever done a whole webcast dedicated to outbound selling. Um, it's something that people sort of talk about um, in very broad terms, but to be honest, I've coached a lot of PMs and I know very, very, very few PMs who take this seriously. Such a scramble out there to find new doors. If you ask any PM any day of the week, what's your number one challenge in running a property management company? They're going to say more leads. But if that's the challenge, then why don't more PMs do outbound selling? Well, we're here to crack the code. Actually, let me take that back. Ben, Yoni, and Kristen are here to help you crack the code today on outbound selling. So glad to have you joining us. Jump into chat. Tell us where you're tuning in from. One of the things I love about these webcasts is we sort of have the event inside the event. Nobody listens to me anyways, and everybody is just interacting in chat. So be sure, light up chat. Let's get the conversation going. Where are you tuning in from? And uh, let me just take a moment to introduce our famous panelist, Yoni Schmidt. Is it okay if I call you Yoni today? Is that too personal? Yeah, absolutely. Right. No, okay. thank you. Uh, VP of sales at Key Renter PMC, uh, Kristen Lopez, co-founder of PM Path Builders. Um, and uh, I'll let you guys tell your story. So I'm going to skip the bios for now. And um, our own Ben Smith, director of sales at Profit Coach. Uh, Ben's definitely been around this industry for a while. So you probably know Ben from a number of different um roles in which he's been providing PM's value for a number of years, and yours truly, uh, myself, author of the NARPM Accounting Standards, Chief Strategy Officer here at Profit Coach. We help property managers expand their entrepreneurial freedom by building highly profitable self-managing companies. All right. Um, well, and as I like to say, every session, one of the things I'm most proud of and certainly most thankful for are these fine people on the screen. Katie, Jed, Bria, we call the Brianator, and she lives up to that title pretty much every single day. And Joseph Daniel, and of course, my wife, Megan. All right. So um, if you've got questions, be sure and drop those into the chat box. Uh, great to have everybody joining. Mary, thanks for coming in from Sarasota. Beth from Lakewood Branch, <clears throat> Florida. David Tree, Indianapolis. And a lot of you are texting and messaging the panelists which is great. We love that personal messaging, but nobody else knows that you're here. So go ahead and change the setting and chat to everyone so that if you have a question, you can be sure and put it out to everybody. So change that from hosts and panelists to messaging everyone and we'll get the conversation going. All right. We are going to talk about outbound selling in just a moment, but uh, if you've been on our webinars for the last several months, you know that Profit Coach is working on a big project the PM operation standards. Several years ago, we worked with NARPM to produce the NARPM accounting standards, which really standardized finance in this industry. Now we're standardizing operations. It's a universal standard to help you determine if you're doing a good job. Well, um, I literally have a meeting this afternoon with some of our people. We have a big council meeting next Monday, and I need some feedback from you. One of the controversial questions that's coming up is how do you measure leasing? And a lot of this has to do with whether or not you pre-lease or pre-list your properties. So we had this meeting yesterday and we're like, what do people do? How much uh, pre-lease listing pre-leasing goes on in this industry. And I'm like, I'm on a webinar tomorrow with 100 PMs, let me ask them. So here we go, here's the question. For occupied properties, do you pre-list or pre-lease units before tenant move out? Answer number one, we never pre-list or pre-lease before tenant move out. We pre-list like a coming soon, but we do not pre-lease units. We seldom try to pre-lease units before tenant move out. We sometimes try to pre-lease units before tenant move out. And lastly, we always try to pre-lease units before tenant move out. This has almost nothing to do with the content today, but I really appreciate you giving me some great feedback on this. All right, 
As always, we're here to facilitate a transformation of mindset and then practice. One of the questions that Yoni asked me in the green room before we launched is like, what do people want out of these webinars? Who's attending? What do owners want out of these webinars? And I said, Yoni, gonna be honest with you. Like, I feel like when people come on these webinars, what they really want is tactics. Um, they want to know what's the best place to buy a direct mail uh, list. And then can you give me an email template that I can use to do cold outreach? But we all believe in tactics, uh, that, that good tactics matter, but honestly, I really think it's more important to get upstream of that and sort of shift our mindset around why we do what we do when it comes to growth. And hopefully today we can do that to give you the motivation that you need to really carry through consistently on outbound campaigns in a way that will actually generate results. So we're here to shift transformation mindset, help you move from fog to clarity in the way you think about growth and ultimately from just sort of gut-based uh, decision-making to predictable forecasting and ultimately benchmark success. All right, are you ready? Let me just show you the results real quickly of the poll that we just threw out there. And it looks like pre-leasing wins, which is really good because that's the camp that I wanted uh, most people to be in because the way I want to define these metrics certainly um, uh, favors the people who do pre-leasing. More on that uh, later. Uh, and in fact, next month, we're going to be digging into all these metrics, uh, but I appreciate your feedback here today. Okay. We're going to talk about outbound selling and we're really going to get straight into um, tactics and strategies uh, in a moment, but I want to talk a little bit about what is your experience with outbound selling and lead generation. So we're going to hear from the panelists uh, in just a moment, but let's just throw up another poll here. And um, if you have uh, any experience with outbound selling, I'd love to um, hear what that is and how you approach it. Um, I, do you do outbound calling, direct mail? Uh, do you host investor events, uh, referral relationships re with real estate agents, lenders, insurance agents, networking events, uh, something else? Um, I, I'm not surprised as I see the results coming in. I just Okay, Ben, what's the number one uh, thing that people do from this list? What's your guess? My guess is going to be referral relationships. Yoni? Nah, I would have to agree that referral relationships are probably the <laughs> highest value ones too. Okay, Kristen's nodding her head. Um, yep, so far 78%. I'll let a few more results come in. 78% uh, of people are doing that. All right, um, let's, but let's, let's dive in here. Um, Yoni? I emailed you a few days ago. I'm like, hey, do you do outbound? You're like, oh man, all over the place. Tell me about your experience um, with with in, in property management. I think you started as an owner, uh, moved to BDM. Now you're BDM manager and trainer in a in a very large firm. Just tell us a little bit about your experience and and specifically how you got into outbound. Yeah, um, I did start out actually as an owner, and then I became a property manager for. Uh, a different company. I was the operations manager. I switched over and became the BDM in Oklahoma City, scaled that market to about six, 700 doors in about 18 months. Um, and then Matt Zalk, our, our fearless leader, came to me and said, hey, why don't you uh, go to Northwest Arkansas and do the same thing? Learned a hard lesson there that you know, not two markets are not made uh, the same and they're not equal. And uh, he kind of transitioned me and elevated me into a sales manager, sales leader. I hired my replacement in Oklahoma City. We went to Northwest Arkansas. We continued to hire uh, another BDM in Tulsa, which is where we launched from there to Wichita. And uh, as of July 17th, we are the proud owners of uh, Kieranter St. Louis and St. Charles. Um, thank you. And so that has been a really humbling experience for me going from the hunter to the uh, hero maker or the hunter maker, mm. challenging one for sure. Uh, my experience with outbound selling and lead generation in general has been uh, all over the place. I love outbound selling because it's one of the most unique ways to really get to know the person, uh, understand where their needs lie, what uh, pain points they have, what you can do to alleviate those pain points. Uh, and build strong lasting relationships that will last for decades and add value to their lives. Just mm -hmm. really look at what will benefit you, always keeping the other person in mind. It's never about yourself when it comes to outbound. 
It is always, always, always about the other person. And if you can't add value and you're subtracting value, then you should recognize that and step away or refer them to the right person who can add value. Even if it's a property management company, that is not yourself, right? Mm -hmm. We don't do large multifamily, but we have relationships in place and people that we trust. And we would refer that out. We don't do short-term rental, but we you know, position ourselves in each of our markets to make sure that we are set up for success for those people who are in a pain point, need that kind of service, and we can refer it without any expectation of anything in return. You know, people could hear that and be like, oh, that's really nice, add value, you know, do it for the other person. But yeah. what's compelling to me about what you said is like, I've done cold calling. I've been in sales and marketing my whole life. I understand the fear of picking up the phone and talking to someone who's going to, who's, a, who's most likely going to reject you. Mm -hmm. But when you switch the motivation from, am I going to fail to, can I somehow help this person? Man, that makes a difference. I love that, mm -hmm. Yoni. That's awesome. Um, Kristen, how about you? Yeah, absolutely. So I um, started out my career as a cold caller for a residential uh, real estate team. So I outbound dialed for eight hours a day for about two years. Uh, and then disease, I found myself, Kristen? I'm sorry? What's your sickness? Like, that's, <laughs> who does that? <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but um, from there, I found myself working within a property management company where I was a business development manager. I was promoted to the director of sales and marketing within that property management company. And my responsibility there was to go out and to create leads for us. We had two BDMs on the team and my strength lied in being able to go out and to find new business for us. Mm -hmm. So I tried just about everything there. Did cold called for sale by owner for rent by owner, put together investor events, put together realtor events. I would show up at offices for businesses that I thought would be good referral partners and just kind of be like, Hey, I'm here. Let's chat. Um, so really went around and tried just about everything to generate those leads. I then went over to coaching uh, business development managers across the country. Uh, there's, there's a lot of transitions here, but then transitioned over to Rediscover where Ben and I together championed the outbound message there. And then now I own my own company with a business partner and we work on growth coaching for property management companies and helping to be able to make sure that we can grow and scale efficiently. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Kristen. And uh, I, I I love that story. That's amazing. Um, eight hours a day. I don't know very many people who do that. So I'm impressed. So guys, by the way, like you have some really, really experienced outbound people on the call today. So if if you have any questions, like light, light, light up chat, let's get chat going. Um, I've got a whole outline of content we're going to dive into, but what's on your mind about uh, outbound calling, direct mail, can't, any kind of outbound campaign? Um, we've got some great expertise on the call. Ben, um, your experience, you kind of told me the other day, like, very candidly, PMs don't get outbound. That was kind of a bold statement. Like, what, what experiences have led you to believe that? Well, um, I, I'm coming up on six years here in the industry. I uh, started my career selling insurance, and then in 2018, uh, moved to a little company called Filter Easy that some of you may know now is second. <laughs> um and and basically the the entirety of my career uh, at Second Nature was was doing outbound. Uh, believe it or not, in the early days of Filter Easy, people people didn't know what a filter program was, uh, and so we were reaching out to people to spread the good news. Um, I, I did move on to Rediscover with Kristen uh, and and championed outbound there, and and have been here a profit coach. Uh, for about three months now, uh, but but to my my comment to you, Daniel, um, you know I think uh, so so many property management companies have been built on um, you know SEO, right? The the online space of people coming to your website, making sure your website is optimized so that they can find you. Um, and the reality is, is that's that's a pretty small portion of your addressable market, right? Because those are the people that are looking for property management services. And we know that really only about, I don't know what the latest statistic is, about 30 to 40% of investors even hire a property manager. The majority of them overwhelmingly self-manage. So that 
a, a term I've used in the past at Rescover is that there's a big blue ocean out there of people who don't know who you are. Uh, they don't know that you could solve their problems uh, and help them. And so I think Outbound is all about going to them um, and to what Yanni said, right? Providing value. You, you guys know the difficult challenges of property management better than anyone. And um, your, your potential clients are living that day in and day out, right? And, and maybe they have a preconceived notion that, uh, oh, property management is too expensive or, you know, they're not going to be able to do it as well as I am. Uh, and I think we all know that that there's a lot of value in having someone that's a partner uh, that can help you navigate. So I think it's about going and finding the people you want to work with and making new friends. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Ben, and, the, and, and you characterize that in, the, in, in your approach to selling, that, that friendship orientation. All right. Uh, you guys can see some of the uh, poll results here. Uh, of, of what people are doing currently in the outbound. Uh, by far, referral relationships are the biggest one. I'm actually surprised, guys, um, that outbound calling is at 34%. That's, that's, that surprises me a little bit. I, I would have actually thought it was a little bit less than that. But as you can see, there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, so let's talk a little bit uh, about just uh, what we're going to cover today. And we're going we're gonna to talk about outbound myths, um, some things that hold people back, strategies and tactics. Um, we're going to talk specifically about referrals. That's obviously a big one, um, but like you're doing it, but how optimized are your referral campaigns, uh, outbound team and outbound execution? So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, let's talk a little bit as you guys, you guys have been kind of sort of on, on, on both sides of the equation here, both in terms of uh, being an owner and then also um, training owners. What are some of the things that hold uh, property management owners back? or BDMs back or growth staff back of any kind when it comes to um, outbound. Yoni, uh, or actually let, let's go, Kristen, you've been on the consultant side uh, a lot. Let's, let's start with you. So I, my opinion on this, it's a hot take, okay? And I hope no, yeah. I don't offend anyone here, but I think that in property management, a lot of times we suffer with this imposter syndrome mm -hmm. that we don't actually believe in the value that we're bringing across to where whenever we go out, it's like, oh, they're going to say no to me. They're going to say this. We get all of these objections already in our head that then prevent us from going out and actually making the calls, right? Because we think investors are going to say this or investors are going to say that, or they're not going to like this and they're not going to like that. And we hold ourselves back from going out and actually talking about it, right? Because Yoni, you summed it so perfectly that outbound is not about selling. Outbound is about going out and finding the pieces of value that people need from our service. So if we truly believe, like if property management companies, you believe in your core that your property management company is the solution for people to have passive income, to have financial freedom, to have you know the ability to move away and you're going to take care of their property until they come back and move into it. Whatever your belief is that your service provides, you don't believe it deep enough if you're not out there telling everyone every single day that this is what I can do for you. This is how I can help you. This is what we do. Because in that outbound, you're sharing how your management company is the vehicle to get them to their goals. And so I think that a lot of times we set ourselves up for failure because we already throw objections up before people even give them to us. We're mm -hmm. holding ourselves back from being able to pick up the phone because we're like, oh, they're going to think we're too expensive or they're not going to want to hire us or they're mm -hmm. not going to do this or that. And we hold ourselves back there and give ourselves this false belief that people are going to say no to us when in reality, mm -hmm. we haven't tried. Mm -hmm. what, what, what practically, like, how do you make that switch, Kristen? Well, I think that you get really, really deeply centric on what is the value that my company mm -hmm. provides right? Who are we best designed to work with? Mm -hmm. What are the problems that we're solving? And this mm -hmm. has absolutely nothing to do with your fee structure, with your, um, your assurances or anything else that you cover. This has everything to do with the value that you are providing and the solutions that you're mm -hmm. providing to current customers, right? Mm -hmm. What are you helping them to achieve? What are you taking care of for them so that they can go do what they want to do? Mm -hmm. And really honing in on that message and talking to the members of your team, talking to your property management staff, you know, what are the, what's the positive feedback that we're hearing from our owners? What are the good things that we are doing? Because I think a lot of times get really just bogged down with the negative things, the people that are telling us, you know, Hey, you didn't do this correct. You didn't do that. But what are the things that we're doing really well? And then getting the team buy-in around this message of, 
like our, I don't even know if it's a core value there, but the value that we provide and what we are going to like just center ourselves around is this idea that this is what we do. We mm-hmm. help people get from point A to point B and here's how we do it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if yeah, that's that, that, yes. And, and, I, and I love that. And when you pair that with really specific clarity around the target audience. Like this is the very specific profile of the kind of person that we serve best with these solutions. I think it makes it even more magical. And and and, and there may be multiple profiles. Like one of the most successful companies um, that I've seen in terms of growth strategy is Good Life led by Steve Welty. And they're excellent. They've got like, you know, five personas that they've named uh, of their target clients. And they have very specific value propositions for each of those personas. And what I love about that is it, it, it takes, you know, if you do pick up the phone and you do make that cold call, or you do send that cold email or that, uh, that cold postcard, you can be very almost like oddly relational. Cause like, it's like, they get me like, this is a service that's built for me, not just generic support for investors. So I love taking the specific message, pairing that specific, uh, uh, message to a specific audience. Um, that's that's. I think the idea there is niche as much as possible. Now you can have multiple niches, but niche as much as possible in terms of um, who you're reaching out to. Yoni, how about for the BDMs? Um, like, and, and let's just talk a little bit about this. Like, are all of your, you know, how, how many BDMs do you have in your staff right now? Uh, right now, four. I'm acting okay. as one as well in okay. Northwest Arkansas. Okay. So obviously that that's a, that's a that's a by by any standard for the average PM company, that's a, a very large sales staff. Um, what what are some of the common things that you in, in, encounter in terms of mindset blocks when it comes to cold outreach or outbound outreach uh, for your BDMs? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of resistance. There's uh, the the myths, I guess, of, about outbound is that you are uh, trying to make a sale when, in fact, you shouldn't be trying to make a sale. Right. And in fact, no one can ever make a sale. You receive a sale and uh, you can't force anyone to buy or purchase anything that they don't want to. They have to come to that decision on their own. Um, You know, with the BDMs, yeah, there's there's resistance, but people need to, you know, think of outbound and selling specifically, but outbound specifically, really, as farming. Right. You can't (laughs) just put lines in the water and wait for the fish to, you know, hook on a hook onto your. Uh, bait and then reel it in that doesn't really exist and you hope for the big kahuna one day uh, you have to treat it like farming right you have to prepare the soil plant the seed water it uh, nurture it weed it cultivate it and uh, you know it takes time and there are things that are outside of your locus of control but after after you know you do this and of course outbound is one of the uh, one, one of the longer, you know, uh, uh, selling strategies that you have to, you know, give, give yourself a longer runway for, um, you can reap a harvest uh, silos fold. Right. And I, I truly believe that people need to look at BDM specifically need to look at it as farming rather than as, uh, you know, putting a line in the water, just waiting for a fish to hop on that hook. Um, other than that, I'd say, with the BDMs, it's just like get getting the world out there to know who they are rather mm. than, you know, them always going around trying to, um, mm. you know, find those people. And I, I do agree. When you with say your, they are, do you mean that in the sense of like them the, personally as a human being, as opposed to like, here's the scales guy for so-and-so such and such PMC. Like, are you making that personal point? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you definitely, it takes, it takes intentional effort in building relationships to get those, uh, to get the, the outbound kind of flywheel going. So mm-hmm. it's not something that's going to happen overnight. And the reality is that the people who are surrounding you are not going to be the ones that are likely to buy your service. It's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, the, the, their spheres that are maybe two, three, four, degrees of separation from you are the ones that may, may end up coming to you. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I think Kristen mentioned this and she's really communicated this well, it's uh, creating value, right? Mm-hmm. When, when, a, when a BDM is at an event and they're hosting an event and they're networking with people and someone says, what do you do for a living? The way you answer that question is crucial. If you answer that question by saying, oh, I'm in property management, 
the other person might as well just walk, turn around and walk away because you just said everything they needed to know. But rather than saying that, you could say, well, you know, we help our clients build wealth by uh, removing the headache of managing investment real estate or investment uh, properties. You know, that triggers a little bit more of, a, of, a, of an interest and an intrigue for those people to ask a follow-up question. Like, oh, how do you do that? Well, we help uh, identify, analyze, uh, acquire, and uh, close and manage your real estate assets for you. So with BDMs and outbound, there is resistance. There's a saying in, in sales, right? The 200 pound phone, right? Have you ever heard that? Yeah. The 200 pound phone, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. I can't pick up this phone and make, you know, Kristen, Kristen must have, you know, some super muscles because she's been picking that phone up, you know, eight hours a day. That's a, that's a big challenge, I would say. Um, but you just have to do it. And it's not about selling. Recognize that you're not trying to sell. You're trying to build a relationship. And uh, the, there's a very, uh, we found a very unique trick with direct mail that I think um, is pretty cool, but you really have to identify people's pain points and their needs and, and fulfill those needs and, and alleviate those pain points. Are you going to tell us what that cool trick is in a moment? Uh, sure will. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, ben, um, you, so, so in your work with Rescover, I think you, you probably had to do a fair bit of filtering of the people that you talk to uh, in terms of like, Hey, is this actually a good fit? Is this is this outbound actually a good fit for you, for your company, relative to your ambitions and abilities? Um, so can you just speak to before we dive into Yoni's awesome secret on direct mail? Um, can you just dive into for a moment, like what kind of PM is outbound the right fit for? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there's a, a few different categories here. Um, you know, to Yoni's point, like outbound does take time. And, and it also takes consistency. Um, at Rescover, Chris and I would hear a lot of stories like, yeah, I tried direct mail, it doesn't work. Okay, well, what did you try? Well, I sent a mailer to a thousand people and one person responded to me. Okay, well, how many times did you send the mailer? One time. Okay, well, that's why it didn't work. How many times have any of us bought something out of the blue, you know, the first time someone reached out to us? It just okay. doesn't happen. In fact, the statistics support it's closer to like seven to 10 touches. So I think that a, a big piece of this is the time piece and coming up with a strategy that you can realistically commit to. Um, the first thing I'd say is if, you, if you're brand new in the business and your website, you're on like the 10th page of Google and the phone's not ringing, right? Like you need to be picking up the phone, right? It's like survival mode. Like I've got to, I've got to work. I've got to find some customer somewhere, right? So, uh, you, if if you have a small company or no doors yet, right? Like, you have time, um, and would encourage you to go that route. I would say, you know, if you're kind of a, you've reached kind of a critical mass of a couple hundred doors, don't have a BDM yet, right? Like, Chris and I would tell business owners, like, hey, if you're the BDM, like you probably don't have time to commit to this because you're wearing so many hats within the mm -hmm. business. And in order to be consistent with this, you really have to devote time. And that's not to say you can't develop a strategy that, you know, maybe includes like one or two hours of your week doing this. But um, I, I would say the best fit is honestly someone who has identified that their growth goals uh, exceed the amount of leads that are coming in on their own each month. Okay. Like if you look at your, your funnel and you say, okay, we've got 20 leads coming in a month, we can convert 25% of those, but our growth goal is actually twice that, right? You've got to find new ways to fill the pipeline. Um, and I think outbound is absolutely a way to do that, especially understanding that it, it you know, it is farming, right? Like you, I think where a lot of people get hung up is they don't see results right away. And so they decide, well, yeah, this, it just doesn't work. And I'm here to tell you it does work, but it's not going to happen overnight. So yeah, I, I think it's, if you're a business owner who's wearing the sales hat just on your own, right? Like the amount of time you're gonna be able to devote to this is probably uh, different. Um, but yeah, again, like it, it sort of depends on what your growth goals are and where you want to get to. Patience, time, 
passion around adding value and just massive biceps to pick up the phone. All right. Okay. Um, so let's dive in. We're going to talk about some really specific outbound strategies here. We have quite a few questions coming in um, to chat. So I'm just going to, um, before we kind of dig into all of these categories here, i um, going to throw out some of these questions. Um, first from Andrew, um, guys, where do you get lists of numbers and addresses, whether that's physical addresses or email addresses, to cold call and do cold outreach. I'll take this one. Yeah, go ahead, Kristen, thanks. Um, there's a number of different places that you can go to get this. When I was a BDM, I went to the city, I'm, I'm in San Antonio, I went to the city of San Antonio and I bought an absentee owner list from the city. I think it cost maybe like $18 or something like that. Huge Excel file, we sorted through all of that and filtered down number of properties and things like that. So. We took that list and then we skip traced it through a third party service. So you can do it manually. You can go to the city and you can purchase this list of absentee owners. Um, there are other um, softwares out there that can help you to do it. Rescover is one of them. Then there's Prospect Now. Then there's, uh, and it's just falling out of my head, but there's a number of places that you can go to to purchase these. Absentee owner lists is what we're looking for there. Um, specifically is, is who I would be looking for. Um, so there are, again, a number of places that you go to. You can go to the city. You can go online. Anything that you guys would add to that that I'm missing? Uh, no, I mean, we use Risk Cover and uh, we, we get ABM and investor lists through our franchise partners. Uh, yep. What was that, Yoni, ABM? AB, like, uh, yeah, the absentee uh, okay, list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, is it so, so like, what, what talk, just unpack the investor list there for a moment because um, that, that might not be exactly synonymous with absentee owners, right? Yeah. The investor, I mean, that a lot of it is from risk cover. I mean, we, mm -hmm. you can, you can search and um, put the, you know, you're looking for owners who have two to, you know, 10 single family residential homes or five to 15 single family residential homes and then uh, skip trace them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a hint at, you know, where, where we're, you know, uh, finding interesting uh, success and uh, just general, um, I would say, uh, fun strategy lesson for us was direct mail. It was difficult. It wasn't successful. We had to pivot. Uh, we we go on court records. We're looking for uh, self-managing landlords who are doing evictions. Uh, we are targeting them with specific mailers to say, hey, is your tenant a headache and you need help with this eviction? Uh, the, 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 the reality with that is you have to be quick because you don't have a lot of time to do it. And farming for that information is a lot of work. So, you know, we currently have, I don't know, maybe 50 remote team members on our team. Um, and, and several of them work on our marketing and sales, uh, department and within that department and, you know, Regina, for example, she was, she sits in Buenos Aires is doing, um, an amazing job, just sifting through a large amount of data, not just in risk cover, but in other places as well. Such as, uh, just online. I mean, you know, stale, stale for sale by, uh, for rent by owners, um, any, any for rent by owners. I mean, not to not to give away the whole story, um, but you know there are still rentals out there that are sitting on other property management companies' websites. It's not that difficult to find the owners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. In, Got it. In directing in 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 being specific about um, you know your messaging to those owners, right? With your direct mail, you want to hook uh, you know uh, the offer that's going to benefit them and a call to action that they will follow through on. Well, let's, let's, let's spend some time there because David's asking, um, how do you get a prospect to engage once you contact them to acquire their business? Uh, and, and I guess that's a little bit more, um, yeah, no, that's, I, uh, yeah, that's very relevant. So, you know, I think there's this idea like, Hey, if I just send enough emails or just send enough postcards or just make enough calls, good things will happen. Um, but like, man, the difference between a good call and a good email and a bad call and a bad email is so night and day, right? Like, and I think maybe there's a, a whole aspect of like getting into the excitement of being clever and creative 
and skillful in the way you engage people and sort of gamifying it for yourself that has to be part of the recipe for success here. So Yoni, like you, you talked about, you know, uh, like I can almost see the twinkle in your eye when you're talking about the hook. Like, so um, give us some examples of, of some things that maybe have worked for you or that you think could work in terms of a, a specific clever message to actually get someone to take action on a piece of paper. Yeah, I mean, on a hook, you know, if you see a stale listing that's been on the market for 60 days, you know, it could be as simple as, and it doesn't have to be very clever or sophisticated. It could be as simple as, you know, can't rent your property, question mark, right? That's the hook. The, the, in their mind, they're answering, yes, how did you know, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And then, and then you can say, as the offer, you can say, you know, hire QN to property management and we'll give you two months rent if you hire us between, you know, August 1st and September 30th. And for them, you're you're not just helping them by saying, okay, we can rent your property quickly and we have the systems, the people, the resources to do all of that, but we're also going to alleviate your pain so that you don't have to pay property management fees for two months because we understand that, you know, you're paying that mortgage probably out of your own pocket, right? Yeah. And then the call to action could be scan this barcode to sign up today. It goes to a landing page. On that landing page is a video of one of our BDMs. They explain the offer and uh, there's a form. If they wish to do it, um, they can uh, fill it. If they wish to fill it out, they fill it out. It goes into our CRM and it comes into the specific stage where we know exactly, Kristen saw the back end of our lead simple. And you know, with all the markets, it, it was a pain to set this up, but it goes exactly into the stage and exactly into the market that it needs to go to so that the BDM is aware of exactly what the pain point for that owner is. Mm -hmm. It's an eviction. I can't rent my property. It's, um, you know, a renovation that I need to do. And I can't, I can't handle it because I'm an out-of-state investor. A whole, there are a lot of, there are a lot of ways to do this. Um, you really just want to be specific, right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, that's a huge lesson. That's a huge takeaway from today. Specificity. I love that. Kristen, um, thoughts on, on, and getting engagement and, and maybe even, maybe focus on the the phone side of things, the relational side of things. How do you actually open up that conversation when they're like really upset that you called them? Absolutely. So, I mean, I always try to diffuse things with just, you know, the good old personality that I was blessed with. But <laughs> my, my favorite opener uh, yeah. for the phone calls is, hey, uh, you know, like, hey, is this Ben? Yes, this is. Hey, Ben, my name is Kristen. I know this call is out of the blue, and I'm sure a lot of people are calling you about your property on 123 Main Street, trying to sell it or trying to buy it from you. I don't want to do either of those. Instead, what I want to do is talk to you about how we can take your property and turn this into a cash flowing asset for you. I know it may seem too good to be true, and I know that this is out of the blue, but do you have five minutes for me to talk to you about turning your property 123 Main Street into a rental? That was like my opener of like... Mm -hmm. I know this is out of the blue. Here's what I want to talk to you about. Do you have, and it's a specific ask. Do you have five minutes? Do you have whatever I really needed? Do you have five minutes? Do you have 10 minutes? I would never lie, right? If I said five minutes, I would have a timer that would start for five minutes. And I would say, all right, Daniel, I'm at my five minutes. Do I have your permission to continue talking to you or should we set up another call, right? And being very- <laughs> Can we continue well. talking now or talk later? <laughs> I love that. That's a great strategy. I love that. Give them the option and let them choose. I love that strategy. And yeah. I did that today to someone. Can you talk on Thursday or Friday? And what time is best for you? He said, Friday at 9 a.m. Great, <laughs> let them pick and be the decision maker. Yes, yeah. choice of two positives always, right? That is- yeah. That is the 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 framework there that we want to work with in sales. And for the cold calling, we acknowledge, okay, that this call is random. Like that's my favorite thing is like, we're honest about it. I know this is out of the blue. This is what I'm calling for. Do we have time to do it? That's the formula there. And however you fill that in for yourselves is how you fill it in for yourselves, right? Some people just want to get straight down to the point because that's their personality, right? For me, no, I want to try to make a joke. I want to try to make them laugh. I want to disarm them a little bit and let them know that I'm not a scary person here to talk to. And whatever it is that you ask for, stay honest to that. I think the biggest thing in outbound is the integrity that you're leading with, right? Are you somebody that's worth their time for them to talk to leading with value and then just staying true to the ask, right? Do you have five minutes? And at that five minutes, be honest with them. So on the phones, that's what I found is, or 
If we want to ask people, you know, hey, can you help me with this? People love to be helpful, right? But we're very specific um, in that. And Kimberly, I see your question come in there. People don't answer the phone. What are the other strategies? Well, I'm going to call them and I'm going to follow up that call with a text. And then after that text, and I'm going to wait a couple of days, I'm going to send them a text and say, hey, this is Kristen. Remember, like, I'm trying to talk to you about this and then call them after the text. So I'm going to use a couple of strategies there. Because you're right, people aren't going to answer if they don't know the phone number. So we want to supplement the phone call. We leave the message. We supplement it with a text message. And then before our next call, we lead with a text message. And then we call again. It takes a little bit of extra time, but it breeds familiarity for people to where then they're like, oh, okay, I, I know who this person is. I know what they're calling about. And they're either going to answer the phone and be like, don't call me again. And be like, oh, my goodness, I have caught you on a really bad day. I do apologize for that you know, is there a better time that I can call you back? And then they're like, no, don't call me back. And depending on, you know, your mood, there'd be some people that were just really angry and I was just feeling feisty on a day. So then I would call them back and be like, hey, I called you last week. It seems like I caught you on a bad day. Is today a better day to talk? Because that's just me, right? Some people would just leave that alone. <laughs> and again, it's just, you know, like you said, gamify it, Danny. That's my thing. Like I like to gamify things for myself where I would have, okay, if I make these 10 calls, I get to do this. If I do this, then I get to do this. And it's just, it's fun at that point of, can I take this person who doesn't know me and turn them into a friend by the end of this call? That's the whole goal of, of outbound for me in, in calling. You have to get excited about playing where's Waldo. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. I would, I would also add that um, if you can follow up with an email that has an embedded video uh, that also helps, that's a, there's a ton of response to that. Um, one tiny little secret that I'll share that's really been successful for us uh, is just, and I'm giving away the sauce today. So Daniel, uh, I don't know how many of these I can do, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's respecting the other person asking them what their preferred method of communication is, has yielded us insane results. I mean, wow. we've went from 50% response rate to over 90% just to that text message. Hi, Ben, Yoni here with Kiona Property Management. I saw that you had inquired or I'd like to chat with you about this or that or the other. What's your preferred method of communication? <laughs> as simple as that, we, we just saw response rates skyrocket. Awesome. Ben, let's talk a little bit about farming. Um, and, and so, you know, you, you you get the campaign going, but as has been said, this is a long-term relationship, consistency over time. Um, can you just give some, some pointers in terms of what do PMs need to make sure that they have in place on the back end to properly care for these leads over the next 6, 12, 18, 24 months? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it does need to be that long. And I think to Kristen's point, like it's really helpful to work in different types of, of touches into your process, right? Because if all you do is cold call, right, you're limiting yourself. And I, you know, I think the other thing too, is like whenever you're doing cold outreach and these people don't know who you are, right? Like even, even different, like if, even if it's a voicemail, right? Like even if you don't, you don't actually talk to the person, but they hear your name, they hear your company name, right? Like that's, it's starting to embed. And so then when they get that, that mailer the next month, right? Like, all right, we're starting to make progress here. And I think something that's really important that needs to be noted, it, like this is so timing dependent in a lot of ways. Like you only mentioned a great example of like an eviction, right? You may be reaching out to someone who's had the same tenant for five years. They've been excellent. There's no issues. The house has never had any sort of maintenance problems, right? Like, yeah, they don't they don't need you right now. But guess what? That tenant moves out and now their property sits on the market for 60 days. And they're thinking, oh man, I need to call someone. Who is that guy that left me a bunch of voicemails and sent me a bunch of emails and sent, you know, sent me a bunch of mailers, right? Like I, I used to hear stories at Rescover all the time. Someone would say, yeah, like this guy called me on a mailer that I sent three years ago. He had stuffed it in his folder, like with all his property information stuff and pulled it out when he needed us. So I think the consistency part is important and you don't want to, nobody wants to be spammed. Right. So like, I would not recommend that you build out a sequence that you're, you're, you know, <laughs> calling every three days for six months. Like you're, you're going to lose people. Right. Uh, so be, be reasonable. Um, I, I would say, you know, with a cold lead, I would start 
a little bit more aggressive with like, all right, we're going to send an email, we're going to make a phone call, and we're going to send something in the mail the first week, right? And and do more intensive follow up for a few weeks. And if you get to, you know, like a month with with nothing, no response, no engagement at all, maybe two months, then I think you can kind of move to a more of a, a spread out cadence, right? And and I think a lot, what I think works for a lot of people is shifting to more like general education, right? Maybe there's a new law in your your city and saying, hey, you know, thought you might find, find this interesting, you know, because you, uh, again, back to what you know, he was talking about, like, be specific, like about, I, I see that you own three properties in Wake County, North Carolina, you know, thought you might find interesting this new, this new bill just passed, this new law just came into effect. Um, happy to chat with you about it if, if, if it's helpful, right? So it doesn't have to be, again, like if, if your approach is so like pitch focused, you're going to lose people. I would definitely take a long-term approach of trying to help people. And, and even if they want to continue to self-manage, right? Cool. Help, help them, help them do that. And then one day they might need you and you want to be the person that they call. Um, one other note on your question that you asked Daniel is, Another important piece of this too is like tracking where your leads come from, right? And lead simple, you can you can set that up, um, you know, with sources and that sort of thing. Um, but on the back end, I think that's really important to gauging success. Like if you're not tracking where these leads are coming from, then you have no idea if <laughs> if any of your marketing strategies or outbound strategies are working, right? Yeah. Um, it's important to 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 keep up with that, and then. You know, you you can always iterate, right? On on different messaging, different types of touches, that sort of thing. Awesome, guys. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, networking and um, referral relationships. And um, you know, Yoni, what's worked for you guys here? Since you're 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 pulling back the curtain, let's keep going. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, broker presentations uh, work. We'll host a breakfast or a lunch, and we'll come to a broker's office or a lender's office, um, and an insurance agent's office. And you know, it's all about communicating. You know, what value and benefit can we bring to these agents' lives to make them look like the heroes? Whether it is, uh, you know, a real estate agent who just wants us to dish out rental analyses to their clients so that they can make informed decisions on whether or not this is a good opportunity for them to invest, whether they need, you know, a risk cover property analysis report that, you know, we run, I don't even know how many, I mean, I must run a hundred risk cover property analysis reports every month. And, and we're looking at numbers and we're helping people analyze and understand what works uh, and, and basing it off of their strategy. Um, Val just providing value education is a huge component of this uh, you know when you're producing content you should have that in mind we certainly do we try to make you know a large portion of our content uh valuable and educational and you know, looking at uh ben, ben mentioned something a second ago you know tracking and the fact that it takes so long i'm looking in northwest arkansas right now there's one lead it took me 503 days to close um, an outbound lead that took 503 days to close. And that's crazy. But think about if we weren't consistent with this property uh, and this property owner, right? We, we would have never brought them on. Okay. Um, so in terms of networking, yes, brokerage presentations uh, in, at, in lenders offices, at uh, insurance uh, brokers, uh, events we look we partner up with the local RIA chapters. We do uh, a a annual mixer on our fourth quarter. Daniel, I reached out to you because we want to do uh, a self managing uh, income property owner webinar, which you know we decided to delay into 2025. Uh, you know we're going to be we're writing books. E uh, we're writing these ebooks for each market on how to be a success a successful self managing landlord. And these are almost a hundred pages long because we want to be very specific. We want to give everyone the secret sauce on how to operate in terms of, you know, managing their own real estate and how to be successful at doing this. So all about providing value and uh, at these events, we'll give out stuff. We will give out uh, these eBooks. We'll give out gated resources that we've worked on. We, we will give out, 
to real realtors, one of the best ways, the last slide that I put on every brokerage presentation, um, and I create a lead simple number for this, I say, uh, text me your name and your number to this number, and I'll give you a $50 gift card to whatever, Quick Trip, Walmart, Target, Starbucks, something. And then guess what? I have every single one of their uh, phone numbers, emails, and uh, names. Regina, who works on the back end of Lead Simple, knows exactly what to do. She goes in, she edits everything because it comes in as an unidentified texter. And we put them in a in a little drip campaign. Thank you so much for being at the presentation. We're so glad that you can be here. You know, let's connect one on one for coffee, and we just take it from there. And we have a very robust, uh, very robust, very big, and very long real real estate professionals pipeline that Walter Bowser, our business development manager in Oklahoma City, uh, great guy, really brilliant, knows his stuff. He's definitely a hunter. Uh, he's put a lot of intentional effort and him and I were working on this, you know, for, I don't know, maybe four months before we rolled it out because we wanted to be so specific, uh, for real estate agents. We wanted to put so much value into what we're communicating to these agents, um, and, you know, help them be the heroes in front of their clients. We're, that's phenomenal, Yoni. How are you getting in to make those presentations? Like, let, let, just, just. Yeah. Continue. So, I mean, one of the ways that I did, I was literally standing in this room and I will, uh, I have Regina go in. She puts together a spreadsheet of all of the brokers in each of our markets. And I, we stand in a room and we start putting together personalized emails. And I, I, I mean, full disclosure, I hope none of the brokers are on here, but I will filter it by. How many Scots do I have? Let's say I have 10 Scots. That's the first email that I'm going to make. I'm going to sit, stand in, the, in front of the video and I'm going to say, hey, Scott, Yoni here with Key Rental Property Management in Northwest Arkansas. Then I have 10 emails that I can just, boom, shoot out immediately. That's how we do it. And then yeah. we make an offer. We make an offer. We'd love to come host a brokerage presentation in front of your team. Here's what it means. Here's what it takes. We come for 20 minutes. We'll bring lunch or breakfast. We'll bring coffee. We'll explain to them why why we can bring value to you and your team. We even provide them with the presentation before we come so that they can see exactly what we'll be presenting. We promise we will always send the business back to you if those clients ever decide to uh, buy or sell again. And we follow through. People love using the word follow up in, in sales. The real The real value is follow through and provide value. Awesome. Okay. Um, this is great stuff. We do need to move along. We're going to talk about um, team here in just a moment, uh, because I think that the uh, a lot of this rises and falls on the quality and the excitement and passion of people willing to get as creative and clever as these geniuses on the call today. We're going to come back and talk about the team and what kind of who's you need to have on your team for this to work. But what's the best strategy for you if you're on the call today? Um, I want to give you the opportunity to meet with our own resident outbound expert, Ben Smith, one-on-one, -on -one, no charge, um, for an outbound strategy session so that Ben can help you explore the various strategies that are available to you uh, and specific to your business, help you to find what's the best opportunity relative to your interests, passions, and goals, and then from a numbers-based perspective, help you identify your number one opportunity for maximizing growth plus profits. All of this has to be done in a holistic perspective of what your financial goals and objectives are for the business so that you can make sure that you've got the right commitment that you need to make this kind of effort possible in your business. So how does this work? You send us your PL, We'll do a free analysis of your financials. Then we'll get on the call, walk through the opportunities, both in terms of outbound strategy and financial opportunities for your business. And it's a big check um, that you have to pay us. Ben, ben will send you his Venmo account at the end of the call if you're really excited about what Ben shares with you. Um, so if this would be useful to you, um, just go ahead and say, yeah, uh, I'd love to have a strategy session with Ben. Um, ben um, would be happy to chat with you. All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about team. And Kristen, um, kind of the question I want to throw up here is like, what are the who's and maybe what are the characteristics of the, the who's that are necessary to make outbound successful? Like some people I think are probably thinking, well, I've got a BDM. I'm going to go tell them to do outbound. Um, 
but is it the right kind of BDM for outbound? Talk to us about this. Yeah, I think that the some of the key characteristics here for your BDM is they have to be passionate about what it is that you do, right? A lot of us will have BDMs that are really great closers on the inbound side because the people are already hyped up and they're ready, ready to go, right? However, they're not necessarily overly passionate about the opportunities of property management. I have found that like the best for outbound, like Yoni and myself, we are not unicorns. We just know that we know what property management can do and we're excited to go tell people about it. And so like, it's really people that are passionate, I think is the number one thing and consistent and are able to be held accountable. Like those are the three things there that I think make a good BDM that can do outbound and a bit of resilience as well. There's yeah. a lot, one of the myths I think is that it's hard. If you're spreading value, it's not hard, right? If you're selling, it's hard, but if you're spreading value through outbound, it's not hard, right? So really somebody who gets that and is creative, like I know there's a lot of words that I throw out there, but that's what I think would it takes for to have a good outbound BDM. And big biceps, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's talk a little bit about leadership. Um, I think one of the challenges that I've experienced in working with PMs in this space is like, oh, I'm an operator. Um, I'd like to go hire an expert or, you know, I'd like to sort of outsource not having to think about this. Um, what has to be true of the owner and of leadership in the PM's uh, business, Yoni, for, for uh, this to be successful? What kind of leadership has to be present? Boy, um, I'd say uh, someone who can lead by example. Don't expect your BDMs to make videos if you're not going to make videos, right? Um, someone who can inspire rather than motivate, a leader that's open to mistakes being made, a leader that is patient, um, and a leader that is committed to growth. Because if you're not committed to growth as a leader, those that you serve, right, with, uh, as a leader, because uh, in, in my personal opinion, we should all be taking the um, servant leader uh, mental mentality when we're, you know, leading a team, especially a team of high performing sales individuals, um, you know, taking, taking that uh, uh, servant leader approach uh, is so critical. That's why once a week I call every BDM on Wednesday and I say to them, what can I do to help you today? What are the open opportunities that you need brainstorming on? What are the open opportunities that I can, you know, do I need to jump into? Do you want me to hop on a call with this lead and you? Can we have a conversation? And we unpack some of those things on Monday morning sales calls that happen every single Monday morning at 8.30 a.m. without fail. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, you just really patience and understanding uh, and givers is the number I'd say givers, right? If you, if you haven't read the book, the go giver or the go giver sells more, um, you know, talk about the five laws of stratospheric success in every single meeting that you have with your BDM, uh, and watch them transform, not just their lives, but also the lives of other people. I love it. So this is so random, but just to pull back the current a little further today, I do scripture memory with my kids every morning. And the verse that I had them say was what Jesus said, even I did not come to be served, but to serve. And that's the message that we're talking about here. He said, I didn't come to be served, but came to serve and to give my life a ransom for many. So love that um, servant leadership. And, um, so, so helpful. And I'll say the, la the kind of one last thing on this is, you know, the number one rule of outbound selling and, and selling in general is when it comes to pitching is just don't, don't <laughs> yeah. pitch. Okay. We're playing a friendly game of tennis as uh, you know, they say in the go-giver and, and it sells more and, you know, you want to serve so that the other person can serve the back, uh, the ball back to your side of the court. Awesome. All right, guys, uh, we're going to wrap up here in about five minutes. So if you all have five minutes more, uh, great. If you have to jump, any either any one of you totally understand. I want to talk about execution here, um, outbound execution. But before we do that, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call today, we are um, launching the PM operation standards here over the next several months. 
Um, and um, I have the opportunity to give the folks on this call uh, a little bit of a sneak preview of what we're putting together. I'm partnering with Second Nature next Wednesday uh, to put on this webinar, Triple Win Operations, Key Metrics for Property Management Excellence. And so uh, if you want a sneak peek into the PM operation standards uh, next Wednesday at 12 p.m. to kind of understand the key metrics that we're finding drive operational e excellence um, and participate in an interactive discussion to gain best practices around how to drive those metrics, um, to a triple win experience, borrowing some second nature language there uh, for your PM business, then just uh, say, yeah, I want to be part of that webinar. And um, obviously there's, it's just a web, it's it's like, it's for you. Um, and so uh, just say yes, and we'll get you registered and hopefully you get some value out of that. Um, let's, let's wrap up here and talk a little bit about outbound execution. Um, so um, Kristen, like Monday morning, um, actually I'm gonna give this one to Ben. Monday morning, Ben, like, how do you uh, in advise people to actually sit down and plan an outbound campaign? Yeah, I think you, the, the place you want to start is how much time do you have to commit in a week, right? Um, if you have an hour a week that you can commit to this, it's probably not realistic uh, that you should enroll 250 people into your campaign uh, right off the bat because you're never going to be able to keep up with it. So I think... Uh, identify how much time you have, uh, which methods you, you want to follow. I, I recommend it's a mix, but you know, for some people, they may just want to start with a direct mail campaign, right? Um, resource obviously plays into that too. Um, the biggest thing I would say is set activity goals for mm. yourself. Mm. Right? Like if you start with, well, I, you know, I really, my goal is to sign up a hundred new doors on this you're really quickly going to find like, man, that seems like a big number and it's moving slowly and we're not getting there. We're not getting there. But if you focus on the activity, the at bats, so to speak, um, it's a lot easier to stay consistent with it. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to call 30 people this week, or I'm going to cold email 50 people this week, um, send a hundred direct mailers this month, right. Set goals that are activity focused would be my, my biggest thing right off the bat. And, Think about who who is your ideal client. We we talked about that a little bit, but I think that's really crucial. If you're looking to work with accidental landlords, the messaging is probably a lot different than working with an investor who owns ten properties. Awesome. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, these questions on the screen here from a variety of different angles already, but um, uh, Yoni and Kristen, kind of final thoughts on how to get started in terms of the strategies we've talked today and execute. And, and what kind of results can people expect? You want to go first, Yoni? Uh, sure. Uh, you know, I would say, first off, lay out all the options and go after the ones that make the most sense for you and your market uh, and for your budget, because this is an investment and it's a commitment. And you don't want to start outbound and then just cut it off uh, at its knees because you need to give yourself, uh, like Ben was mentioning, you know, a 24 month runway for something like this, especially if you're going direct mail, this is something that you minimum, you want to have seven touch points and you want to be very specific with your messaging and the people that you're getting, uh, in front of, um, what kind of results you can, uh, expect from PMs. It's hard to say I'm playing in, you know, five different markets right now, and I'm seeing different results for different markets because, you know, um, Arkansas is less of an investor market. It's more of a accidental landlord market, whereas Tulsa or Wichita and Oklahoma City are more investor markets. And so the messaging is really different. Um, I would say for us, at least, the investor markets have been a little bit more uh, difficult on the outbound because there is, you know, so much on the expectation from the investors. They, they also, uh, they're savvy. They know their stuff. They've been around the block. They've owned properties. They're experienced. Uh, the accidental landlords are the ones that you know truly need more of a you know upfront education, and they're maybe a little bit more nervous about you know the onboarding process. So you know being patient and clearly laying things out will will help. Uh, in terms, it depend depending on your market and what kind of market you're in, um, I I would say for the first year, if if you could bring on you know, after the first 10 months of outbound initiatives, 
uh, you know, consistent outbound initiatives, if you can consistently bring on two doors a month, you will ultimately reap the the harvest uh, from the farmer's perspective uh, and continue to do it. And it will pay dividends and reinvest those dividends. And, you know, they will also pay dividends and you'll see it grow and your your uh, results will also increase over time. Awesome. Don't give up. Final thoughts, Kristen. Yeah, absolutely. So my parting words to all of you here is to just go out and try, is to figure out things that work well for you and just try. It doesn't matter if somebody else tells you, oh, that's not going to work it may work for you. So figure out the things that make you excited, the things that, oh my gosh, I can't wait to write 15 letters this week, or I can't wait to go visit these offices. Find the things that light you up and make you excited to go and do and plan those to do. And if you're planning calling, if you're planning anything like that, make sure you have your list before you get into that hour time block, because I know all of you guys are going to get there and be like, oh, who should I call? And you're going to spend 45 minutes trying to figure out who you're going to call and only have 15 minutes to call. So figure out who you're going to call before you get into that block, but just go out and try and try the things that make you excited, that make you feel like you're having fun. Because again, just lower your expectations of you're going out to do this activity to help people. Your property management company is the vehicle to get them to their goals and go out and be that person and you won't fail, right? You will always land on your feet. Final awesome. words. Thank you. Hey, reach out to Kristen at pmpathbuilders.com. Put it in chat there. Reach out to Yoni at keyrenderpmc.com and Ben at Ben at pmprivatecoach.com. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Up next, Wednesday, August 28th uh, at 12 p.m. CST, we are doing episode eight of the 2024 Profit Power Hour. We are going to be doing an official uh, walkthrough of the PEM operation standards. It's going to be great. We're doing a deep dive. And thank you, everybody, for joining live today. Thank you to our panelists. And as always, go make it a great day. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.